Hey, everybody, how you doing? This is Patrick Chaka, editor-in-chief of Yachting Magazine, and I am here today with Matthew Zimmerman, who is a co-founder and vice president of engineering of Far Sounder. And today we're going to be talking about forward-looking sonar, which is a very cool technology that makes boating safer and obviously more pleasurable. So good morning, Matthew. Good to see you. Hi, Patrick. Thanks for having me. Great. So today we're going to be talking about forward-looking sonar. So for those who may not be really familiar with with forward-looking sonar, they know the word sonar, right? What What is the technology and what are, what are the uses that it has for boaters? Sure, well, any technology that uses sound waves to make a measurement is a sonar. So there's lots of different sonars out there. Our products are a forward-looking navigation sonar. That means we look out in front of the ship, in front of the boat, to tell you what's underwater before you get there. And we operate out to navigationally significant ranges. So in, in particular, you have this uh, Forest Sounder Argos 350 system. So what are the primary components of that system? How does it work? You talked about ranges and stuff. So from a safety standpoint, what can the system do and, and the capabilities of the system as far as enabling a yachtsman to be able to see an object, a target in front, and able to either avoid it or slow down and, you know, and prevent any potential hazard? Well, the Argos 350 is our newest product. We launched it officially at FLIBS last year and just started shipping units both in the US uh, and overseas uh, over this past summer. The Argos 350 goes out 350 meters ahead of the vessel. So that's uh, over 1,100 feet forward underwater. Uh, it creates a 90 degree field of view. So plus or minus 45 degrees off the bow. And every time we ping, we update that entire image. We have color mapped to depth or color mapped to signal level. So with the user interface, the operator can really easily see where the water is safe and where it's dangerous. Obviously, you have your charts that help you navigate uh, nominally where it was safe or dangerous the last time somebody bothered to look. And as we all know, those charts aren't exactly accurate in a lot of the places that uh, a lot of yachtsmen like to go. So in our software, we actually have a chart overlay display and you can see the sonar data overlaid on top of the chart information. And this allows you to really easily see where the chart is accurate and where it isn't. Obviously in those places where the chart isn't very accurate, you probably wanna pay more attention to your traditional navigation techniques like looking forward, using the radar, uh, visual observations, watching the sonar and echo sounder and so forth. So is this a technology that you can retrofit onto an existing you know, uh, yacht or is this something that you, is strictly for an OEM or you know, how, how does that work? Certainly. Uh, we have about 50% of our customers are new builds and about 50% of our customers are refits. Actually in the new build world, lots of times the hull is actually constructed before the customers made any decisions about the navigation electronics. So even with our new build coast customers, most of them are actually treated from a refit point of view. With the Argos 350, the customer has the option of installing it in a fixed mount on the bow, which is traditionally how we install our other units. However, the Argos 350 is also designed to be deployed by a hoist and fits inside a standard 10 inch diameter sea chest. So if you have a sea chest already installed on your vessel, you can swap out what's there with the Argos 350 and deploy it through that same hoist mechanism. How is the Argos 350 uh, forward-looking sonar different from any other potential you know, forward-looking sonars that are currently on the market and available? Well, we like to think of our products as uh, commercial grade or explorer grade systems, uh, real marine technologies, not just recreational uh, toys. So our products go out to navigationally significant ranges. The Argos 350, like I said, starts at 350 meters range and our Argos 1000 goes out to a thousand meters range. So more than a half a nautical mile. Wow. We wow. produce those images uh, every time we ping a full 3D image. So there is no mechanical scanning underwater. Our products are designed to be really robust and really accurate. And they're used by really famous commercial ships around the world. The Sir David Attenborough has one of our Argos 1000s installed to help it go and explore uh, the world's Arctic and Antarctic waters. 
The big difference between our products and other products that are called forward-looking sonars is really the complete 3D image, fast update rate, navigationally significant ranges, and easy to use. So when you talked about the, the update rate, how, how often is this refreshing in providing the data back to you? Uh, all of our products have a uh, short range mode of 100 meters, and that pings about three times per second. The Argos 350 at its full range of 350 meters, more than 1,100 feet, that pings about uh, once every second. So you, you had mentioned in an earlier conversation we had about th this also has the ability to create what you call local history mapping. So could you tell us a little bit about what that feature is in the Argos? Yeah. So our core value proposition is providing the yacht owner, the vessel operator, information about what's ahead of them in real time under the water. But at the same time, we're collecting all of this sonar information about the areas that were ahead of them that they've since passed over. And so we now have the ability to store all of the best bottom detections and produce a 3D survey-like output, which we call our local history map. And that's essentially a 3D trail of everywhere the vessel's been recently. We've invested heavily in the behind the scene technologies to make that survey be produced without any human interaction. There's no manual cleaning of the data or fixing data points here or there. It's all done automatically by the software. Right now, our current products have a one hour local history. Sure, there's not a really long time, but there's still a lot of things you can do with that, like an anchor survey before you drop the hook, do a quick survey to see where the shallows are. And so when the vessel's swinging with the tides and the currents, you can now see where the stern is relative to those survey areas you saw before. One of the great things about our product is, yes, we have a strong hardware component, but all of the processing and user interface is done on the software side. And we have updates a couple times a year. And in an upcoming update, we're going to be releasing more local history mapping features. For example, the ability to store and recall uh, those one hour blocks. Eventually, we even envision being able to share that data across a fleet. So if you're cruising with some friends that also have a far sounder installed on their vessel, you'd be actually able to share your data with them and vice versa, so that when you're trying to meet them in those exclusive out of the way spots, you'll have a reference to follow along, as well as having your real time Argos 350, Argos 500, or Argos 1000 sonar operating ahead of the vessel. That's a lot of capability. Um, with regards to um, onboard, can you network this technology with your other onboard, onboard gear? Does it easily talk and play nicely? That's a great question. So our primary interface is uh, a full screen display and our bridge computer has a standard video output that can go into uh, pretty much any of the existing bridge displays you might already have uh, on board the yacht. We take NMEA inputs from the uh, GPS compass or gyro, uh, heading, rate of turn, speed of ground, course of a ground, et cetera. And our software uses that for part of its processing as well as displaying a basic conning display inside our software. We do have the ability to send our data and our controls into third-party systems. We do that today with uh, the Vatsila Nakos Ectus system. Team Italia iBridge, and we're also starting to do more and more integrations with other well-known integrated bridge systems. So I'm sure in the future, your readers will see more and more Ectus and electronic chart systems supporting the far sounder technology natively inside those other displays. Matthew, for, for somebody who may be interested in the Argos 350, where are we at in terms of pricing for this, for this system? The Argos 350 has a list price of about $55,000 and is available through a worldwide dealer network that we've established. The system may sound a little expensive to you, but when you look at other advanced technologies that you may have installed, we're really in that same price point. Take a look at the advanced FLIR camera systems, the stabilizer systems, and so forth. But really, when it comes down to it, you have a really expensive asset, the boat the ship, the yacht that you're navigating, and what's the cost of avoiding one major accident? We're really trying hard to uh, make our systems pay for themselves by preventing expensive accidents. 
we've covered a lot of ground <laughs> today with the Argus 350. It sounds like a fairly robust piece of technology. And I look forward, hopefully sometime soon, we can get together and see it working uh, in person. Um, that said, if somebody is interested in learning more you know, on their own, where can somebody get some more information about Forest Sounder and the Argos 350 system? Uh, obviously through our website at www.farsounder.com. You can also follow us on all the standard social medias. They are welcome to contact us by phone or email. And we have a pretty robust dealer network all around the world. Of course, a lot here in the US as well as Europe, Asia, and Northern Africa. Well, that's fantastic. Matthew Zimmerman, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you and Forrest Sander for spending some time with us and telling everybody about the Argos 350 and all its capabilities. So if you're interested, and learning more about the Argus 350 and forward-looking sonar and all the capabilities that it can offer you, um, please do stop by the Far Sounder website. And uh, Matthew, thank you so much again for your time and you have a great day. Thanks for having me, Patrick.